Hello, I am Ahmed, and uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about bifurcation point as well as primary and secondary path of stability with a very simple example. So, uh, for this example, we assume we have a rigid bar. At point A, supported to a hinge, and at point B, it is completely free. And to a stable, we add the rotational spring with the rotational stiffness of K at point A. Then we apply the force P on the top of point B. Now we want to calculate and understand how it loses its stability. To calculate the deformation of this column, we sketch one deformation or rotation about point A, and here we have delta vertical at point B. So we can calculate according to the rotational angle Delta vertical at point B will be L minus L cosine of stat. And as a result, the cost of energy will be minus P times L, 1 minus cosine of stat. And while the rigid bar is rotating around A in the spring, we will store the potential energy so then w will be 1 over 2k theta power by 2. the total potential energy will be w plus v which will be 1 over 2k theta 2 minus pl 1 minus cosinus theta so in this example i'm going to assume first that theta is going to be very tiny, so tending to zero as the result, one minus cosinus theta will be one over two theta power by two. So if we substitute this in the total potential energy equation, it will be one over two K theta power by two minus PL theta power by two divided by two. To find out the buckling load, we take the first derivative of total potential energy function, and it will be k theta minus pl theta. From here, we can calculate what is p critical. It is k over l. So I name this p0. To understand if the system is stable or not, we need to make the second derivative of total potential energy. So it will be K minus PL. And as long as it is greater than zero, it means that the system is stable. So wherever P is less than K over L, then it means that the system is stable. From here, we can divide both sides by p critical and then we can name p over p critical which is dimensionless value lambda less than one and here lambda equals one so this would happen when theta is not zero because we assume that uh, theta can be omitted so if we come back to the main equation one more time k theta minus pl theta it is theta times k minus pl and if we force it to be zero there are two answers one is p equals p equals k over l and the other one is theta is zero so theta is zero is called primary it is regardless of the force so this is called primary path 
and the other one is secondary path. To understand this better, we can sketch theta versus lambda. Or for this one, I will go with P. It might be easier to understand. So assume that here this is K over L. It is P critical. So if we increase the load, this is the limit. I can sketch the first or primary solution. And also I can sketch the secondary solution. Primary. So what does that mean? It means that the load can be increased and with the primary path which is perfectly a straight vertical column, it can withstand until the load reaches to K over L. At this point, the structure has two choices. One, the load can be increased without any deformation. And as a result, the uh, system remains a straight vertical or it can go through the secondary path or second path by distortion or rotation about the angle the angle will increase and the load will remain constant so what we need to check is that uh, is the system stable or not so for this we need to take round 2 pi by respect of theta and it will be k minus pl so assume that this is a function of P and L and K. So function of K, P and L is K minus P, L. I can sketch this uh, graph as well. Let's go with the same position. But this time, I assume the vertical uh, axis is round 2 pi by respect of theta. Or let's say this is F, K, P, and L. And the other one is P. If I sketch the line, we can see that if P is 0, then it is K. And if uh, P is K over L, it is zero, so it's a, a straight line. And at uh, P equals K over L, this is the turning point. So it means that if P is a smaller than K over L, then the system is a stable. And if P is greater than K over L, then it is unstable. So here we can see that uh, the first part of the primary path is stable. And after that, as far as it cannot remain stable, then it starts to choose a secondary path. With the constant load, it can just rotate. So this is very simple explanation about the primary and secondary path. The point that the primary path is changed to the secondary path is called the place that the column bifurcate, or it is called bifurcation point, or in other words, buckling point. So we can just
bifurcation or buckling point. Now we are going to calculate also the system with not simplifying or using Taylor series or expansion for cosinus theta. So in this example, we assume that theta is very small and it's tending to zero. But if it's going to um, change its position, uh, there will be rotation and this equation might not be valid. So we can check with the calculation of uh, cosinus theta directly. Now we can come back to the main equation and check the solution with the more accurate calculation. So pi was 1 over 2k theta 2 minus pl 1 minus cosinus theta. So here, round pi by respect of theta will be k theta minus pl sinus theta. And if I put it to be zero, then E will be k over L times theta over sinus theta. Round two pi by respect of theta will be k minus pl cosinus theta and we want to have it greater than zero so p should be less than k over l one over cosinus theta so now we are trying to understand these two equations the first one is uh, the critical load and the second one shows where the system is stable. So I assume round two pi by respect of theta is the function of f, a, p, l, and this time with theta. So f, a, p, l, and theta was a minus PL cosinus theta. And P critical was K over L theta divided by sinus theta. Now I can use MATLAB. When you want to sketch it, it is better if we go with the dimensionless factors it might be much more easier for, for this case as we know p critical zero is k over l so here i can divide by k for this one i can divide it by k over l so here i will have a function let's say g function which will be one minus p over k over l cosinus theta and I can rewrite it as 1 minus lambda cosinus theta. And here I can write it down p divided by p critical 0 or p critical divided by p critical 0, which is lambda, is theta over sinus theta. So this helps us to sketch the diagrams easier. So let's go with the First, lambda. Lambda as a function of theta is theta divided by sinus theta. Theta is zero up to p divided by two. And I can sketch this
Here we can see the graph. Also, I can sketch, I can check uh, if the system is stable or not. If you remember, a minus p l cosinus theta needs to be greater than zero. As a result, p needs to be less than a over l times one over cosinus theta. And if I divide both sides with k over l, then lambda needs to be less than one over cosinus theta. So this is the place that uh, the system will remain stable. So here uh, we can limit the value to, let's say, 2. So here we can see that the, I can change the graph, the same graph, and this is going to be dashed line. So here we can see that if I limit even to 1.5, for example, it's easier to see. So here, here we can see uh, that for thetas, the system looks to be stable. Now, uh, to understand it better, it is better if we go with the uh, g function, which I made here. So g is a function of lambda and theta. I can make another function, g as a function of lambda and theta. It's going to be 1 minus lambda times cosinus theta. I can plot this one. Uh, so let's go with lambda, lambda and be something between Uh, zero let's say up to two for example this will be g function lambda and theta so we need to assume something for theta so let's go with zero first and this will be lambda so here is exactly the uh, equation that we had so if cosinus theta is uh, it's theta if theta is zero cosinus theta will be one and then this is exactly the line that we already had in the other um, a solution but now let's go with for example 0 0.2 so here we can see that we have a slightly shifted the uh, system so it means that the uh, capacity capacity of the buckling will be increase a little bit and here also we can find out the same so let's exaggerate this value to let's say to one radian for example here we can see that it's coming to 1.80 something and here also if we go with the, the vertical marker to be at 1 and I can put a horizontal line and find out so here we do not have this domain I can increase the domain and here we can see that it is exactly the same position. So I can sketch these two together.
okay, because I use the same uh, factor or function or uh, variable. It's it's not working. Let's put it lambda one. Here also lambda one. So here we can see that with the value of 1, we have almost the same in the other graph, 1.8 something. And if I go, for example, with 0 0.5, you can see that the second derivative is at 1.14 something here so it shows that uh, if the load is less than uh, 1.14 or lambda is less than 1.14 then uh, the system will be stable here we can see that the lambda is uh, surely less than that and i can calculate it's something around 1.3 or 1.4 You can also calculate uh, by hand. Let's bring these to our notes. And write down what it means. So here, this is a g function or rom to pi by respect of theta. And this is lambda. Here we can see that with this, if theta is 0 0.5, then it means that if p is less than this value, 1 point something, We can calculate uh, the, the uh, exact value. For example, from here, 1 minus lambda cosinus theta equals 0. And we are going to calculate what is lambda. Or theta equals to 0 0.5. Lambda will be 1 divided by cosinus half, 1.139. So better if I come back and change this one. And better if we calculate also. So this is the limit. It means that if lambda is less than 1139, then the system will be stable. So at this point, if theta is 0 0.5, then lambda will be theta divided by sinus theta, and it will be 0 0.5 divided by sinus 0 0.5, and it will be 1.043. So it is less than 1.139. As a result, it is stable.
So here, this is the limit, lambda limit, which is for this, if theta is 0 0.5, this limit will be 1.139. Here we can see that, okay, if lambda limit is 1.139 for 0 0.5, so here, this is greater than the value of lambda at this stage, at this point. So this is the simple example about bifurcation. And in this example, we noticed how to calculate the uh, bifurcation point or buckling point and what does that mean i hope uh, we can continue with the other example thank you for watching and see you in the next example